Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today, we are going to take a look at chum, classic effects from uh, Igor Vasilev. Yes, yes. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll know exactly what it does and how it works. So we've got a piano. Uh, let's see who's here. Hi, Colin. Hi, Russ. Hi, Stephen. Three Stig. Wow. Marcus. Stephen Rimmer. Hi, gang. No effect on this piano. It's uh, 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 it's a CP grand from uh, from pure synth. And very nice this too. Okay, so let's do a basic overview first. Right, yeah. In fact, no, let's not do a basic overview first. Let's play a little bit of it. Right, let's switch that off. Let's play a little bit of it. And then we'll talk about the app when maybe a few more people are here because it's quite detailed how this works. So, but once you understand how it works, you'll go, I, I get it. That's it. Right, okay. So here we go. If I now engage the app, uh, and at the moment I have this yellow bar here all the way over to the left hand side, which means we're only hearing uh, effect A. Okay, so you've got these circular things. This is effect A and effect B. If I move this all the way over here, it's basically the mix. It'll then just be there. But there are lots of other ways to control this. So, and of course, a blending of the mix will be like that much of A and B and etc etc so it's that's your mix between A and B so we're going to go full A and I'm going to close the microphone and just play a bit so here is it with
Okay, so you can see like all of Igor's apps, you can get uh, very, um, you know, very creative. Let me just turn this feedback and depth down and stuff. Right, so. <laughs> right, how does this work? Right, first of all, let's explain this bottom section here that works uh, dependently of the... Uh, at the moment, you'll see the sequencer lanes, these two little triangles are going up and down like this. If I stop the transport in AUM here, they will stop. They pertain to the sequencer. In the moment, there was no actual direct feed, you know, level going to the sequencer because I have the sequencer level turned all the way down. It's fiddly. I'm going to set me get hold of it with my pen. Okay. Right, like I said, let's switch that off. Blending between this and this with this is a manual way to mix between the two effects, either A or B. If you have either A switched on, you will see that it will also automatically track all the way towards A. And then if I hit B, it will automatically track all the way towards B. Therefore, kind of modulating the effect, but only one time. The speed of the modulation is controlled by the slider above it here. This is a, a rate knob, so that's going to be extremely slow. Like that's the slowest it's going to get. So that's how that works. So you could go, it, this, once this is engaged, this has no, all you're hearing is A. And now it's gonna track over to B. Let's just go back to the beginning of A. So when you're in like morphing mode with either A or B switched on, the position of this d doesn't make any difference. So don't let that confuse you. Here's the speed we were talking about. Now, this is very fast, of course. And then basically instant. So understanding how this works is, is kind of key. Let's put this about there. Cycle, right? will cycle basically between left and right effects uh, so you can the, the, it, but it does it kind of automatically okay so fast now the width the width triangle here you're not really going to hear that because it's 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 a it this is very old stereo very old stereo hello very stereo bass there's lots of stereo cool stereo stuff going on so which unfortunately you can't hear in a mono stream. However, I can explain. Width will widen the sound of the effect, basically, so width. This follower is an envelope follower, and the envelope follower is dependent on what algorithm is selected here. So we'll get to that in a sec, okay? This is important. You can't like kind of go into the envelope follower module itself and choose 
which envelope it's going to follow. It, it It's all preset inside the machine, inside Classic Effects. And this is the same which is true for everything that's in here. You can control certain parameters depending on the algorithm that is set. Now, aerosol and atmosphere, they're not... They're not really algorithms, they're presets. They're just not the same name as the algorithms. So you won't find an algorithm in here or an effect in here called flanger or chorus. No, Igor hasn't done it like that. How this works, let's just take, let's just stop that cycling. This is driving me nuts. Um, let's just take a look at one because one and two are exactly the same function wise and in this app the manual is your friend well it should be in most apps but it really is in this the manual is quite important because when you change an algorithm here around this outside edge you'll see there's a little highlight here it's not really hard to see maybe i can do it with my what's it right let's get on here you see this here this like uh orange band that runs around the outside like this it's not labeled up and it's the same on this one so everything i'm telling you about this is the same as this all right this is where you actually change the, the algorithm so if you watch there where it says aerosol and also in the middle here a big pop-up box will appear and it will change you'll see i'll take hold of it now you'll say algorithm Radioactive, that's another algorithm. Sweep is another algorithm. Now, you might be saying, well, why aren't they called classic algorithms? Because it's Egon Vasilev. Uh, aerosol, radioactive, x-rays, maze, choir, mirrors. These are the algorithms. These are the presets. You see, the difference is if you choose an algorithm, orbit, say, None of the rest of your controls or parameters are going to change. You're just changing the algorithm. Okay. Whereas if you choose a preset, for instance, aerosol, click and set and close, all, all your, like you see, it's gone back. All your actual algorithms, uh, all your sections and settings are... <laughs> to change so once you start making adjustments here let's change this to a different algorithm mosaic see it's got a different flavor now let's change a different algorithm let's choose dimension e the algorithms are made up of various types of effect and this is what you need to do to find out which effect because the writing doesn't change, but each of these parameters does something different depending on the algorithm that you have selected. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So if you're select, like for instance, what we are, dimension E, these will control various aspects of that effect, like the output mix. These are always pretty much the same. The output level which kind of just the envelope follower, which will depend be dependent on how hard you strike the key. Uh, this one, and you can see it's echo feedback. This will be, uh, this is always going to be echo rate. And you'll see it says echo rate, but it, it works differently. Like say on this, you've got modulation rate, but they're doing different things. They're controlling different aspects of a particular algorithm. That's the depth of the effect. So how can we find that? I'll get to the sequence in a minute, but how can we find out what does what? And this is where the manual is pretty important. So we know that the algorithm we have here is dimension E. We can select it there. 
So we go to our manual and hit help. Forget all about this main screen stuff at the moment. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It's not a massive. Here, you go. Here are your algorithms. Nothing to do with your preset. This is key. So what did I say? Dimension E. So dimension E, you can see here, and this is what okay, you can spend some good time having a look at this. Dimension E is made up of a chorus, a vibrato, and an echo. And this algorithm may need a wetter mix in the output signal. Okay, so the trouble is, if I close it now, I have to go all the way back and scroll up. So, so the modulation rate and the modulation depth control the vibrato module. Okay, so there's different modules per algorithm. This is my point. <laughs> Then the effect level controls the intensity of the chorus. The width controls the stereo width. The envelope follower affects the modulation rate. Uh, the rate of the vibrato increases as the input varies from soft to loud. So like, for instance, me striking it. So what does it control? It controls the vibrato increases. So, so very lightly touching the key. Striking a harder, not the delay, the vibrato. So you might hear it better on more sustained type string type instruments, stuff like that. But however, and the sequencer increases the echo level. Okay, so, and then there's dimension E, which we might have been on actually. I'm not sure if it was E or D, but they're very similar. If you're on if something like flange orbit, it's a flanger and an echo. Uh, then you've got insta flange, there's a flanger, an auto war and an echo. So they've got mixtures of al different algorithms and depending on the algorithm, sorry, close that, depending on the algorithm, these will do different things. These just increase the amount that's available. It's like an ascend the, of the uh, envelope follower. <laughs> So that being said, let's have a quick look at the sequencer. The sequencer section, so you understand what I mean, right? The width is controlling the stereo width. The envelope follower is dependent on the algorithm that's selected. And the more you have this out is the more effect that's going to have, the harder you hit the key. Well, it'll tell you what it does, what, what envelope it's following, and it'll, it'll pretty much always be the velocity. Uh, you know, so the sound will change as the velocity is hit harder or set harder per note. Okay, sequencer. Sequence is cool bananas, right? The sequencer, like this, will we'll be running like pretty much all the time if your the transport host is switched on. If your sequencer level, which is this control here, your six, come on, seriously. It's a bit of a head to it actually grabbing, grabbing and right, let me just see if I can grab it with this. The sequencer amount is controlled with this here. And if we go want to look at sequencer, there are two sequencers. There are a sequencer for A and a sequencer for B, right? Okay, and then you can set your sequencer from anywhere from one, to 16 steps and you'll see i have some sequencing set up here already okay so let us um take a look at what's going on let's go back to linear so you get it's good because you can see what linear exponential etc etc will do now so we can set up a sequencer over let's set this over eight so we're not worrying about this this portion here and let's take this up like this now you'll see they're kind of joined if i move this one you'll see them moving between both like that you see 
and I'll set this one like this as well. Oh, it's not that one, this one. And this is kind of a minimum value and a maximum value of the parameter that's going to be adjusted with the sequencer. All right. Okie dokie. Because you can, you know, you're going to be able to do like kind of cool LFO stuff. But you're not stuck to having it sort of, there's your start value and there's your kind of end value here. But you're not stuck to having it in that particular place. You can uh, grab hold of it and move it around. You can't move it that way, but you can move it this way. I guess you could move this one this way or, yeah, that one. And then we've also got different curves. So linear, obviously, is just going to go straight. But we can choose logarithmic, which is a, is, is a sweet, a, a sharp downward curve. And then it kind of smooths it out, a bit like a ski jump. But we could choose uh, logarithmic for the second one as well. And because it's going up, it'll be a, a smooth, a, a, a fairly quick to start. But then we also have uh, exponential, which kind of goes the opposite way. So if we look at exponential for this first one, it'll kind of go that way, I guess. And then again, back to linear. So you have some really nice ways to affect the curve. And, and, in, and in affecting the curve, affecting the way the sound uh, behaves as it passes through the sequencer. So if we just drop out of that, so we've got this sequencer set up. And what have we got on B? Have we got anything on B? Oh, there we go. We've got a kind of a, let's pull this one up. We've got a linear motion sequencer, which is going to be quite severe. Now, again, depending on the algorithm that's selected, you'll see how it's changing now the shape because of the actual, what's it? But before we go, let's go back to sequencer. We also have rates. See the rate? So that's going quite, we can speed it up. And then we can go at halves. This, then this, this. So you can set in uh, kind of like uh, uh, fract fractions of measures. Anyway, let's go to the slowest rate it is. And of course, this is all this is all uh, relative. I'm going to set that to four as well. This is all relative. Let's stop that. You'll see it's a bit slower now. This is all relative to the BPM of your host app. Like, so let's slow this down. You know, what's the sequence to slow down? Okay, so just so that you know that you're, it's all synced together. Okay, so playing a sound now, I'm pushing the sequence and amounts up to full. actually watch it actually quite fun see here it goes zoom the price of this I think it's 9.99 We can we don't have to have it that severe obviously we don't have to have anything severe what's nice is we can we can dial everything back so it's really smooth and let's get a blend now so now we're blending kind of what's that kind of I don't know 70 30 sort of between the two the two algorithms change the algorithm but you can you can hear if we set it central we 
we can still hear the effect there. We can change the algorithms as well. Oh, that's nice. So I think set in a really long cycle. Uh, are we running? Yes, we are. We're running and hitting cycle. Let's wait till it st starts to go back. just epic but you so like you can go you can go mad or you can be very subtle and very smooth and just very very calm and just like an ordinary effect so i don't know let's have a listen to it on drooms shall we i set up a um another session where it's some uh, classic effects drooms uh with a with a uh a, 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 a file from uh, dean Just some, just some drums. And we could have, I guess we could have a listen to um, some of the actual presets. Now you can choose presets for B and A. Just remember that the presets... Although they do relate to the algorithms, they're not really connected. You can change the algorithm here, set your own thing up and save your own preset. Okay. And also just remember that, um, you know, to have a look at the manual section for the algorithm you selected to see what a parameter of the actual disk controls what. And that will give you a much better idea of what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? So what we're going to do, I'm going to close the microphone again, and we're just going to have a mess round. But I'll run through some of the to, through some of the different um, algorithms, uh, uh, presets that look like the algorithm. There's also uh, like a, an ARP an ARP thing. I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at that yet. But anyway, here we go.
you can't see the app on the app store there's a link in this description that your video you're watching you just need to open it up and have a, have a have a quick look guys if you're watching there's 43 people watching please strike the like <laughs> to be that's it guys there you go there is a good look and uh, of all you need to know about classic effects that's everything so it's a little bit different it runs a little bit different than your ordinary effects however it's still it still will do that beautiful kind of just ordinary effect if you're going to put your guitar through it, your drums or anything you can get a little crazy as well just as long as you know that each of the parameters you don't really need to read the manual like I just said, the, the key thing with this app is, you know, just have fun. Just explore, have fun, have a play around, you know, your list stuff. The manual's not massive. I mean, it does give you some important information as to what parameters are controlling uh, the, each particular algorithm that you might have set along the outside of the uh, spinny, disky type things. Now, here's the thing. I've got something of Joe's to show you. Not music, no, no. Joe got you. Joe, are you watching? Bring us that modeling clay stuff in that you got. This is cool, this is, guys. I'm, I'm, this is really brilliant. It's what you're doing, lockdown, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, mind you, we're locked down all the time, we are. Um, I've just got Joe to get his. Joe got some modeling clays from Amazon. It said, I don't know how much it was or what it was called. It's, uh, I'm sure she'll tell us when she comes in. This is really good. This is it's 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 lovely. Uh, this is the Doug doing the. This is Doug doing the review. I've done the review. The review's done. This is Doug talking to me, mates. See, she bought some stuff. This modeling clay. It's called. Right, I'll move that out of the way a minute. It's called modeling clay. It's like it's white. Dryer. Dry. Ah, dry. Dry. Air dry. Oh, it's made in Italy. Well done. It's uh, it's called dry, dry air, eh? Hey? Can't cope with listening to myself talk back to myself. No. It's 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 dry air. Oh, sorry, guys. Dry air modelling clay. Air dry. Sorry. Air dry. Sorry. Air dry. And it's, it's quite soft and spongy. 
so Joe got a picket. Do you know what a picket lily jar is, right? Yeah, oh, darling. I don't know what to do. Can I go back down now? Yeah, yeah. And Joe's going back down now. But Joe got... Listen, this is brilliant. Bye. Right? Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, so Joe got this pick a lily jar. Oh, I dropped all stuff all over the keyboard. And I look. <sighs> Joe got this pick a lily jar for the third time. And this lid. And look what she's covered it in this mod. Listen, covered it in modelling clay. Made a cottage and painted it so the modelling clay dries in the air. Check this out, guys. I'm not kidding. This is brill. Look at this. What she's done. Seriously. Hey, isn't that great? There's the glass inside the, the jar. And she's painted it in alcoholic ink and something like like um metallic -y kind of acrylic -y paint type stuff i don't know but all these bits are modeled out of that clay and then the jar was covered in the clay and you made the hat the roof out of the clay and it, this basically that's it look 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 it's a big lily jar and that's the lid and you just put the lid on any way you like and uh Oh, it's brilliant, eh? I love stuff like this, I do. And she's, you just scratch the clay, you kind of mould the clay. Exactly, from the, it's very hobbit. You just mould, scratch the clay. But I've ordered her some, um, I was so impressed with that, that I ordered her some uh, modelling, um, sculpty type, sculpty type things from Amazon yesterday. Well, Joe, I had £2.98p. You get a big bunch of these modelling scrapey things and that that clay was only like a fiber do you know what i mean but uh, i think that's brilliant i do well you get your keyboards back my got my keyboards back um, i got my keyboards back because i did actually buy joe another midi controller wall of her, a midi controller of her own um yeah which was which is great value actually it's 49 i'll have to review it it was 49 pounds from gear for music 49 pounds Four octaves, same size keys as the uh, King Lab. And I, I'm going to review because it's bloody great value. And I'll tell you why it's great value. It does something a lot of MIDI controllers don't do. It's got an actual five pinned in MIDI as well as a USB, which will work at the same time. It'll read MIDI from a, from a hardware instrument plus MIDI from your iPad at the same time, which I thought for, for 50 quid was brilliant. And it's quite... It's quite a nice, quite the nice keyboard bed too, surprisingly. We thought it'd be a bit clanky and cloppy, you know, but it's not, it's quite nice. Anyway. Yeah, the clay's fun, isn't it? Jo Joe's had kept having to keep uh, keep the clay damp though, because it dries, starts to dry quite quick, apparently. But I don't know, it's a uh, first attempt. I thought that was brilliant. Honest to God, I was so impressed. But I think it's really nice. Anyway, uh, it, it, it looks. If we put it downstairs, it looks really nice downstairs in the book, one of the bookshelves things. Um, okay, guys, that's it. So yeah, and uh, the main point of the video <laughs> was classic effects from Igor Vasilev, uh, and very nice it is too. Very easy, all one screen. Have a quick read. Do you know what though? I would honestly, seriously suggest have a quick read in the manual. Because it does explain very easily what it does. And then it goes through all the algorithms it's got and what they do and what the parameters are. So, pardon me. There you go. I'm going to let you say to to each other. Uh, Joe's got going to get a, a battery-powered candle in it. That's what she's going to put in there, a battery-powered candle. And, uh, yeah, that will be really good. Joe's super artistic, I swear to God, like way more artistic than me. Um, I do music and that's it. Anything else, poof, forget it. Man, uh, Joe could turn around to anything, but she, that's, oh, some people have got that pretty artistic nature, isn't they? Do you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I am going to let you say ta to each other, guys, finally. And uh, bless you all for watching. It wasn't that long of a stream because we, we got through the app pretty quickly which is the important thing. So you can go and have a look at what you need to do. 
So, uh, yes, hopefully see you guys tomorrow with something or other. Don't know what yet, but say uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, see you later. Ta-ta.